Hello everyone, welcome again to another career exploration video with the CT Foundation. My name is Brandon Jewell. I am here with Matt Charles of Mollyworks. Matt, you are the Chief Technology Officer, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So Matt, tell me a little bit about Mollyworks. Like, what is Mollyworks? And then maybe you can also talk about what you do as the CTO. Do you go by CTO? CTO, yeah. Yeah, we're one of 10 other hats that I wear, but yeah. <laughs> That's the official title. Um, yeah, Molly Works, we formed it about five years ago. Um, there's two other co-founders and myself, and we formed it as a powder making company to make powders to support the 3D printing industry that has been, you know, growing in the last few uh, years and decades. Um, so basically we developed a technology to make metal powders in a smaller system about the size of a shipping container. Uh, so it's kind of a portable system. Um, it's, it's a large system, but it you know, can, be, can be moved. Um, and we can go around to various sites. And uh, one thing we do is we recycle metals, um, scrap metals and such, uh, and make them into powder which can be used to make new parts um, from 3D, metal 3D printing. So what you're saying is that you'll take used metal, like scrap metal, you can make it into a powder that can then be used to 3D print new metal parts? Yeah, yeah. So if you have, you know, chips or turnings from the machining process or, you know, used parts, whatever, um, you can take those and we remelt them and atomize them into powder. And then you can, you know, rebuild those up layer by layer with a metal 3D printing technology. So in what instance would something like that be useful? Like who uses that technology? Um, a lot of our um, support comes from the government. So uh, we have a couple grants, uh, one with the Air Force, one with the Army. So this project started with the Army and we're on the you know, third phase, almost finished with the third phase of it. Uh, to help develop technology. So uh, they have an interest in having it on the battlefield at point of needs. You know, if something breaks, you can essentially take it off, melt it back down, you know, re-atomize it um, and, and reprint it, right? I mean, that's kind of where the future would be uh, mm -hmm. technology. So um, a lot of, you know, short turnaround. Um, usually, I mean, if, if pressed within 24 hours, we could take a chunk of metal and make a powder, print a part out of it. Um, so... Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a value there for, uh, for certain markets. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine, especially if you're overseas or something in the military, um, yeah. how long it would take to get that part shipped to you versus if you could just re reprint it in a way yourself. I um, mean, I can also see how that would be just so helpful for just so many, even local, you know, local and, and national organizations that don't want to rely on that long-term shipping or ordering process if you just make it themselves. I mean, that'd be incredible. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, there's the 3d printing technology still need a lot of work. Um, and there's still a lot of qualifications and stuff for, for the markets they are working in like aerospace, but for a lot of simple things, um, you know, like the, say the caterpillars and the John Deere's of the world where they're just making machinery, right. It makes sense to not have a whole bunch of tooling, um, or, you know, something in the army, they have problems with their older parts because they, you know, the contractors have thrown the tooling away 60 years ago. So instead of making a whole new set of tooling, you can, you know, 3D print, you know, short production runs uh, mm -hmm. more easily than, than, you know, redoing all the tooling. Well, I mean, I, I've seen videos about 3D printing doing so many incredible things that are just, is, the way I see it is sort of like, that's the future, right? I've, I've literally seen 3D printed houses. Um, and so yeah. I think you guys <laughs> being on the metal side of it uh, is, is really innovative. And also it sounds really good for the environment. So you're not having to constantly mine for new metals and, um, and then junking what you don't need anymore. I mean, that's. Yeah. Really and there's, you know, a lot of places too, there's a cost savings in being able to do that. Right? I mean, there's, there's a huge savings in being able to get something that's now, you know, that some customer paid a lot of money for and is now worth pennies on the dollar to, you know, upcycle that again and, and make it essentially new again for another industry. Yeah. And, and there's a huge, huge, you know, tail um, for manufacturing uh, logistics and there's the cost and a carbon tail and a, and all that the energy that takes to produce all this stuff. So 
when you can cut that tail shorter, man, it's, it saves everybody. Um, and, and is better for the environment. So mm -hmm. here's a piece he just brought me hot off the machine. So we just printed this. This is actually a, a test print to calibrate the machine. Um, but it was a print for around the muffler of my Jeep because, you know, everybody needs a uh, Inconel 718 super alloy bezel around the muffler of their Jeep, right? So anyway, it's pretty cool technology, right? You can just hit print and for simple parts, yeah, cut it off, machine the back and uh, yeah, pretty neat. So. No more no more doing the research trying to find uh, those hard to find parts for your vehicle. You just, yep, just you make print your own. <laughs> Not cheap, but you know, if you, if you know people. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, you are a co-founder of Molly Works, right? So how did, how did you get this idea and how did you start up this business? <laughs> yeah, that was the, turned out to be the easy part, right? Just having the idea. Um, I, I worked in the um, reactive metals industry. So um, we used to build uh, machinery that processed like titanium and other um, other metals that couldn't be uh, processed in open air. So um, I had the idea to combine a technology that we use to make um, ingots, big solid bars, um, to making making the powder. Um, most of it was melted by induction. So I wanted to use plasma and I, I wanted to simplify the process. Uh, so uh, we got a half million dollars from um, the other co-founders, it turned out to be his father-in-law that finally bid on this, um, started up other companies. So that was our seed money, right? And he was our angel investor. And then we took that and ran. And we ended up building it on my essentially front lawn, uh, mm -hmm. a shipping container and, and, you know, put it out in the rain. And we built this thing at my house, you know, just over the course of one winter. Um, it took us like six months. And then we were able to find some space after that and we, we moved the whole thing into a, you know, like a business park and kind of hooked it up and started running it. So, and then it's just taken off from there, but it's, you know, it's not easy and it's definitely a, definitely an uphill battle the whole way. <laughs> wow. And how long ago was this that you guys started the company? Um, officially about five years ago, we started it. Yeah. Really on a daily basis. Um, we've been talking about it for a little while before that, but, what, tell me what kind of skills and training that one would need in order to be successful in not only the job that you have, but just to work at Molly Works in general. Um, I guess the, the biggest skill is just to have an attitude where, you know, you want to learn the job because there's not a lot of jobs like what we have, right? There's not a lot of people out there that are making metal powders and, you know, melting and vacuum furnaces with electric arcs and plasma and all that, right? There's not, it's not like you find that skill set um, very easily. So you kind of have to train from within. And I, and I feel like it takes, you know, a year to train that person up. So they have to have a, you know, open mind and they really have to be a team player, especially in a, you know, startup environment like ours, right? Everybody's got to stretch. And if a lot of people can't do that, um, I find. So I think those are the basic skills. Um, you know, anybody that's done, Plumbing, um, mechanical assembly work, machining, um, all that stuff is, those are all great skills. Welding, um, all of that's pretty important to what we do. Are you guys hiring right now? Uh, we are, yeah. You are, okay. We have several um, positions we're hiring for. Okay. Folks that are going to be watching this are, are generally going to be in the high school range and they're exploring careers. And so, would you say that um, an entry level position at Molly Works would be good for somebody who is really interested in say machining and, and that kind of hands-on work? Would that be the right person to jump in to apply to Molly Works? Yeah, I, um, we have one entry level position we're kind of hiring for now. Um, that would be like a, kind of a handling, product handling person. So running this is another equipment and packaging and all that kind of stuff, it would be a good, you know, entry level position. And, you know, we, we like to stick with people. So if they have, you know, any skills or they want to continue to develop their skills and, you know, switch jobs or something, I don't think we have a, any issues with that. So. Cool. So Matt, I'm hoping that you can leave these students with something that uh, can help them as they maybe graduate high school uh, and either decide to move on to post-secondary or maybe move directly into a career. 
You know, I think having an education past high school is really important. Something, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that that right there in getting a job, it convinces employees, excuse me, employers uh, that the person knows how to learn and knows how to grow and it can accept challenges. Just face value um, for their education, whether it be you know, machining school or college, right, can convince employer that this person knows how to learn and can probably come into this job and learn um, and do well. Hi, right, Matt. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Um, I, wanna, I want all the students to know, though, that we have a separate video that MullyWorks has created that um, explains a little bit more about the process and, and how you guys are helping the environment. And I've linked that video at the end of this as well as in the description. So feel free to check that out. All right, well, Matt, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brandon.